Leslie Jones is still a Ghostbusters victim. That's my next thing. She's still a victim. She's playing into that. Seven years later, still a victim. Uh, I mean, let's I, take a I look feel at like this. The real victim, so the poor assholes had to sit through that shit. Yeah, I mean, I watched it. It was really fucking bad. Well, did you? Really didn't you get like a, you know, one of those screeners where Kramer filmed it inside the movie? I might have. I, I definitely didn't. I did not go and see this I movie in like theaters. I was sharing it, and I could see people's like the back of their heads in the dark. I mean, I remember the villain in the movie is basically like the Ghostbusters fans. It's like an incel uh, Ghostbusters fan who's the villain. So like from the start, I think they knew this movie was going to be like piss off the fans. I think they wanted, you know, I think they wanted to piss off the fans. That's what it felt like. Almost like troll bait. Yeah. And I mean, these gender swapped movies have have not worked. None of them them have worked. What was Uh, the other one? Ocean's uh, fucking 40 or some shit. Yeah, there's been a few. There's been a few. <laughs> look at, got look at, you could tell that like 30 something percent was just bought and fucking paid for. Yeah, I'd say even this audience score feels too high. Like you could tell that the 74 percent is so fake, but even the 49. Well, I was, yeah, like I was saying the, fake, uh, yeah. the the gap between the two is probably where they paid for it. Yeah, but definitely that fucking 74 percent is fucking absurd. Come on, it's got an eight out of ten on IMDb. Yeah, okay. Eight eight out of ten? Yeah, I looked it up. I was like, are you fucking kidding? Like wow, this is a like, one me, like, this is a one star movie, man. That makes like IMDb just almost like bullshit. Like complete bullshit. It is. It's it's owned by Amazon. And uh when Rings of Power That's was sad, uh I like that site. When Rings of Power was being um put out, they banned you from putting a rating on rings of power on imdb because it was owned by amazon so a lot of people's reviews never went That's up such corrupt bullshit. So, yeah oh no and even the other day it, it came out how disney's been paying off reviewers it came out i mean everyone expected it but it's come out that people studios are paying reviewers for rotten tomatoes so you really can't trust these numbers the audience score is probably the best thing to trust and even that you could still fix it a little bit yeah, you can still manipulate that yeah, you can make a bunch of fake accounts. I think the forty nine percent seems high. I'd say this movie is like a twenties, thirties, twenties around there. Maybe even do they, do they do negative scores? They don't do negative, but there are zero. There are zero percent ones. I know on here. That is like yeah. a list. Or maybe it's like under ten is like a big list. There's stuff like that. How rare uh, is yeah? That? This wasn't. I mean, that's almost like something to be proud of in a way. Yeah, I mean, I guess so. Ugh, I, I guess so. Um, yeah, let's look at the let's look at the numbers, man, because that's that's what matters, right? The numbers are what matters, and that Ghostbusters 2016 well, the, movie. The, the real numbers that matter is how much money it made based on what it cost. Yes, that's that. I was gonna get right into that. Uh, the budget of this was about 144 million, and it made only 200 and. 30 million and now you gotta you gotta take in percent that there's a cut 50 percent cut by the theaters and then probably a hundred million dollar marketing and back then they were pushing the shit out of this this could be like 200 million dollar marketing uh so yeah this movie really cost about 400 million so meaning you had to you have to make about double you have to make about like 800 900 million to get your money back and make some money on this one uh, and they only made 230 million on it now, meanwhile, the 1984 like Ghostbusters. a lot. Was that? Seems like that's yeah. asking a lot. Oh, dude, they were. They opened up. This is Sony. They opened up a Ghostbusters division because they thought they were going to make like multiple movies with these girls. They thought this was like a big, well, know, yeah. the next big franchise. I thought on some trilogies they shot like enough content from several films without without even knowing it'll get picked up the 1984 ghostbusters made in inflation today would have been about 875 million so almost a fucking billion dollars for a comedy movie you know it's it's a comedy it's you know like i had that proton pack thing with the trap and that was fucking awesome i love that toy by the way i have Ghostbusters I wish I still right had now. 
I have Ghostbusters on right now, and he's got the proton pack, and he's put it. He's putting it into the big ghost holding chamber. That's he's putting a ghost in right now. So I'm watching it. As red, it's like a big red safe. Yeah, it looks like a. Red yep, it's like a big red thing. He pushed the button right now. Yep. Who, I forget who the actor is that plays the prick, but he always plays a prick in every movie. Yeah, the lawyer guy. Yeah. And yeah, when he turns it down, all the ghosts fucking fly out. Yeah, that movie's this movie's great. This is great fucking movie. Also, love how they're smoking cigarettes the whole time. Like they're smoke, like they're just fucking scumbags. That's that's the best part about them. Yeah, I, like, I, I like been watching some <laughs> like old cars and stuff, and it, like every single guest is just lighting up constantly. Yeah, they're just a bunch of fucking. I mean, it's nice to see this because it's a realistic character. I mean, that's actually One Piece, by the way, the new show. There's people that smoke. And I was I was like shocked to see it that there's like young people smoking cigarettes and well drinking wasn't the, booze. the manga or whatever it, it's probably older yeah it's older but um yeah there's cigarette but but then you would take that out in modern day but they they kept it in um but yeah what happened here uh, this is so there's a new article that's come out with uh, Leslie Jones because she's I guess she's writing a book she's on the she's on the circuit complaining about everything again uh. She says, I got paid way less than Melissa McCarthy and Kristen Wiig on Ghostbusters. No knock on them, but my first offer was to do that for $67,000. I had to fight for more. In the end, I got $150,000. So, eh. Well, they're you, bigger names than you. Like, they, <laughs> they've accomplished more. Yep. So, uh, it's Critical Drinker, who... Again, great fucking YouTube channel. Uh, probably one of the best synopsis type YouTube channels out there. He does a really good job of summing things up in a few minutes, and he's got a funny Scottish accent. He's good. Good old Scott. He said, because Melissa McCarthy and Kristen Wake were both established actors with a proven track record. This is exactly what you said. Uh, Leslie Jones wasn't. They got paid more because they were worth more. That's that's the truth. There's no question about it. The only thing she was in was fucking SNL, and she complained about that. She complained how um, they never used black people, and then they kept her on. I think as like a pity, it was like a pity kind of like cast member. Yeah, which is bullshit. Like when Eddie Murphy was on, he carried that entire shitty cast for several years. Yeah, so I don't, I don't agree with that at all. Another tweet here. I don't agree with. I, I think she's just a fucking, you know, playing a victim's disgusting. Talent, like you know, when you have to like, just it's pitiful. Act that really was like filling a almost racial quota. Like they had to have a black woman on for every five, ten years of whatever generation of cast they would have, you know? Yeah, I mean, this like, really just that other woman just who was sucks. in like in a lot of sketches and barely said anything. Just it's almost like they just need to yeah. um, appease a certain level of marketing or some kind of shit. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like Keenan kind of was that for a long time, and still is, because Keenan sucks. He's not funny. Yeah, Tim Meadows, he wasn't good. And I think Tim Meadows is better than both of these people. But he wasn't that good. He wasn't that bad though either. Actually, don't I don't I kind of like Tim Meadows. I think he's funny. I wouldn't well, say he's not comparison. funny. Yeah, I mean, I never had an issue. I've never thought like someone like her or Ke Keenan. Who I would say Keenan's way funnier than her, but like I don't like either. You know, like I wouldn't say either are funny. They should have just said Keenan oh, the cross dress, and they could have paid do that quite a bit. They, they could have just paid for the same role twice. I think they actually do that quite a bit. <laughs> like still now, I don't know. Uh, but this guy says well, it's they, absolutely yeah, normal for actors. This, like there's this whole um, lineage of Hollywood trying to force black men to wear dresses. Uh, yeah, look at um, Jimmy Fox on um, yeah, Living Fox Color as Shanene. Shanene. Martin Lawrence. Yeah. Then Big there's mama. um that SNL sketch where Kevin Hart dresses like that little girl that was in that uh Beast of the Southern Wild movie. Yeah. Oh, uh, Wayne's Brothers. He blew up right after that. You know, like it's the ritual, man. It's the it's the, it the is, humiliation it, it is ritual. ritual. It's like an embarrassment ritual. It's almost like being humiliation ritual. in college. Where you have to like do embarrassing shit to get in the frat. Well, that's like a big thing with the Freemasons. There is this like humiliation ritual. It is in their Yeah, because they want to like, have dirt on you. So if you ever try and go it against them, they have 
uh, material to, to incriminate you with. Yeah. And the same thing, I think, with the Scientologists. Uh, they do the same thing where it's like they have a humiliation ceremony ritual kind of thing. And they also know all your dirt because all that shit. So, yeah, Tom Cruise is gay. But, um, yeah, this tweet. Um, It's absolutely normal for actors to get offered jobs at scale, which is true, if the movie will boost their profile. It's not always about the movie, but the ones that come after. Yeah, like this was because you were not famous and maybe that would mean you would get famous later, but definitely not with that fucking movie. Tell you that. And uh, yeah, this article is uh, fucking infuriating. It's fucking stupid. She sucks. This this, this whole thing, I'm going to title this video later called Leslie Jones sucks because she sucks. Um, she opens up about Ghostbusters, uh, death threats, Jason Reitman's unforgivable comment, and the, yeah, more bullshit. Um, what was his comment? Yeah, I'll get into it. Um, and she's like ugly as fuck, and it was hard to even. No, edit. he never. <laughs> Dude, he it's never hard said to edit that. The so... shit out of this because I had to keep looking at this fucking freak every goddamn couple of months. Honestly, what he said was nothing. But she considers it unforgivable. It's like embarrassing. It, like what he said was so. I would be surprised if, if Leslie nothing. Jones is actually a man. Has there been any that kind of? Be, uh... Can you be surprised this day and age? DNA test. But she writes, it wasn't just racism and misogyny either. A lot of it had to do with the fact that I was playing an MTA worker, as though that was something I should be ashamed of. I was a comic. I was used to being heckled, heckled, but for every piece of shit on Twitter, I had to had to reply. Yeah, that's also ridiculous that you had to make this like a, you know, a big issue and go back at the fans. She says I was being sent films of being hanged, of white guys jacking off to my picture, saying, "You fucking, n, we going to kill you." <laughs> I don't think so. Why are people so evil to each other? How can you sit and type that? Who does that? And then here's the unforgivable comment, by the way. Jason Reitman on on a podcast, because, you know, he did that Ghostbusters Afterlife movie, which was way more successful than this one, by the way. And I think fans actually, I don't think they liked it a lot, but it was still liked more than, like, it wasn't embarrassing like this one. This is the one uh, with said, um, Paul Rudd. Yeah, and the Stranger Things, and the Stranger uh, Things little kid. kid. Yeah, yeah, little faggot. Yeah. And he uh, has- yeah, he said... All he said was on a podcast that Afterlife Ghostbusters was trying to go back to the original technique and having the movie feel more for the fans, you know, and that to her was unforgivable, that comment there. And um, that's a lot of the stuff with it. They tacked the fans. Said, I mean, like, she looked like, uh, like no, a that's it. Ugly slob. And um, no, he, he didn't even comment on the movie. He just said that I, I wanted to have this movie get back more for the fans. That's it. But that was unforgivable. And then even um, you know, Seems like this is classic stuff for me. Part. But I I wrote one time wrote Paul Feig. I just said this movie doesn't look that good. That's all I wrote. And I I tagged Paul Feig on it, it. And then he and then he blocked me just for saying his movie doesn't look that good. Quote that good. This was when the trailer came out. I didn't even say like oh you're a fucking dude. To lean into the gay stuff. I think that's his real name. I believe it's his real name. But uh, I was asking for it then. Yeah, fucking embarrassing though. Like you had to block me for that. Okay, I'm fine with it. I'm not missing out on Paul Feig's tweets, or maybe I am. I don't know. Maybe well, I am. Look, He's writing a memoir. Can we look up like the last couple things that he's tweeted out. I can't. I can't see it. You, you might go look it up. <laughs> you have other accounts? No, I don't have another account. All right, hold on. I'll look it up. Look it up. Has he? Does he tweet? He might not even tweet. What's his name? Paul Paul Faggot. Paul Feig or something. Okay, but, um, so he said it was uh, made clear to me. Yeah, he she writes it was made clear to me. Shit. Oh, okay. Yeah, but she said it was made clear to me that the process I was lucky to be on the movie. Which, which by the way, you were you were. You're lucky to be on any movie because you, you you don't really have like you don't really have this obvious talent that I think like Kristen Wiig has. I think not my favorite type of comedian, but I think Melissa McCarthy definitely has more than you. Um, yeah, 
So her memoir, Leslie fucking Jones, is now available for purchase. So that's why this is coming out. So she's playing victim once again. You gotta play that victim card. Um, doesn't talk about how no one wanted to see the movie because of it was an all female cast, but it was really just because the movie sucks shit. You know, there were, the so fans weren't mad at that. They're mad that you shit on a franchise like a Harambe level shit on the fucking franchise. Half of Paul Feig's uh, latest tweets are in relation to some anti LBGT. Uh, murder that happened. Oh, okay. I'm not surprised. So All right, so I'm not missing out on anything. Champion that uh, is like um, he like knew I somebody who was involved or something like that. And by the way, I I like Paul Feig as a as a director. And um, from what I really liked others. It's called Other Space. It was a show that was on Yahoo. Oh, yeah, yeah. Remember Yahoo like used that, to stream uh, shows. Yahoo had a streaming platform. Like they were one of the early streaming platforms and they had the other big at t girl. And yeah, uh, so she was fucking hot on Indian it. Guy. Yeah. And it was a funny show. It was a good Star Trek parody. It was a funny show. Uh, I liked it. And then I also like, I, I'm pretty sure he's done Arrested Development episodes. Um, he's in Heavyweights, which I like. You should have did a show. I, oh, yeah, I like him. He's the like short shorted guy who's the DJ during the sequence where they like have that awkward meet and greet with the uh girl camp yeah i mean he's directed good stuff he's directed freaks and geeks episodes i've liked arrested development episodes i've liked uh 30 rock episodes i've liked um bored to death parks and rec he yes, did, the he's irony the director. of rocking you is you're actually a pretty big paul no, fan. i don't i kind of like him yeah and um <laughs> Sorry, i meant yeah. to say fan not fan <laughs> Well, I, I consider myself a Paul Feig, Feig, Fag Feig, You're whatever. Uh, but yeah, Bridesmaids was funny. I, I think it's an undeniably funny it's movie. Okay. I'm not even. That's a that's a very female cast, and I thought it was funny. You know. You know what it feels Given like? It, it feels like a Judd Apatow movie, just with women instead. He could have produced it. You're you're right on that. There's some there's some vibe on that that feels like it. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, yeah, I mean, Kristen Wiig's pretty funny when she's uh, when she's, she's on. Right, I like yeah. her in a. She's not bad, and that was produced by Judd Apatow, by the way. Oh, okay, that makes sense. And his wife, and his wife too, because she's got to get that man. He's got to get that. He's got to get that money. He's got to put her on the list so he can get double the money.